Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match. This is going to be Kane and Hokomoko on Baron. Before I begin, as usual, I missed it in the last game, but then again, I've shown I4 so many times. So Baron is a small map, eight by eight. Players start in the corners, southeast and northwest. There are actually start spots in the southwest, southwest and northeast as well for players three and four teams three and four. If there were four teams, if you're playing FFA, but that's irrelevant. The starting location, you have 1.81, one, well, basically two twos and two ones for the metal extractors. So it's a fairly light set, like it's plus six within the one base, but it's split up a little bit oddly between the four expansions. Unlike, say, Ravaged, where it's split up even... Actually, Ravaged is not quite the same, because Ravaged is like... That is... Yeah, it's plus six. Yes, yeah, 1.5 for each. Yeah, it's not split up evenly between the four. It's... You want to prioritize the ones further back. Which is actually kind of interesting, given that that is easier to defend. Well, this one is. This one not so much, because you have the hill, which players will often go over this hill to attack. So typically what will happen on this map, players will set up in these expansions, sometimes on the one, and then go for this two in the middle, and then go usually for the corners. Try to set up a bit here as well, because they'll want to set up defender lines, because this is a great spot for defenders. You often see players just go mad for defenders around here. That is a common thing to do. The other problem, yeah, it's a bit of an issue too, because there is this big valley in the center, and that valley, you often see, it matches tend to grind to a halt. If players go shield bot, which Kane is going shield bot, actually both players are going shield bot, yeah, this could be a bit of a grindy game, but we'll see. So Kane, starting out with dirt bags, just for simple scouting. No, wait. Kane's, okay, one dirt bag and then bandits. Hokomoko, yeah, same thing. Both players basically having the same build, although Kane being a bit more economic at the start. They're getting up their convict after only three bandits. No, sorry, two bandits, rather than after five. So Hokomoko, being much more aggressive, wants to go for the harassment early on. And Hokomoko is building up this nice little setup. I'm a bit surprised they're overdriving the less valuable metal extractor, though. They're setting up all... I mean, okay, not totally surprised. They're probably not trying to overdrive. They're probably setting it up as a wall so that glaives or bandits can't go around the south side here and hit the back max. That would be why they're doing it. They're not doing it to overdrive. Because, frankly, there's no point. <laughs> a plus one metal extractor? Don't bother. If you're going to overdrive, overdrive the most valuable metal extractor. It's it's a proportion thing. So, The more energy you have, the higher the percentage of metal is increased. Not the absolute value of metal. So Kane, they have enough to defend against this. The there are three bandits coming in over to the east, and then one dirtbag coming over from the west side of the map. Kane should be able to defend against this without too much issue. Wants to get their units into a nicer formation, just to make sure that they're all together. But the more important thing is that Kane has actually been building up their economy just that much faster. If this convict doesn't divide, if this convict just gets around, manages to build up more metal extractors, it... Yeah, it looks like it's just trying to set up a radar first. But if these gla sorry, these bandits get rid of the bandits that Hokomoko has sent in, then Kane can t easily take this plus 2.1. They can easily take the plus 1, well, maybe not quite easily take the 1 forward, but still, they are going to be able to easily take the 2.1. And then from there, it's they're going to be quite ahead. At this one, Hokomoko is, are they just about finished? They have finished their first convict. And Kane actually being pushed back a bit. They're not quite able to stop Hokomoko's forces. So instead, resorting to a roach. Which is generally a good idea. An idea we don't see often enough, I think. It's one I keep forgetting myself, but it's a very good idea nonetheless. If you're not sure if you're going to be able to deal with a large pack of units, build a roach! And down goes Kane Radar too, so Kane at this point has no real idea of what's going on. They have... Yeah, they have some idea from what they had with the radar. They know there are some bandits here, and they've been able to chase them off, so at least they are somewhat safe. This northeast, cor this northeast corridor is still a little bit vulnerable. A roach over here wouldn't be a bad idea just to be safe, just in case the bandits decided to go over here. However, they are in fact going towards the southwest, trying to go over this hill from the looks of it, and then attack from there, which... That'd be kind of risky. And Kane's commander is right there. It could work though, but it looks like no, they're purely retreating, and they are in fact going... Yeah, Hokomoko going for the northeast corridor. They are not attacking the south, and that would make sense. Kane is likely to expand over to the northeast before they can expand over to the southwest. It's just easier to defend, it's easier to send units towards, this ridge isn't in the way. And that's exactly what's happening. Kane is sending stuff over there. Setting up some 
Okay, good. Setting up defenses. That's what you need. The Roach is protecting the Central Corridor, however, not protecting the Northeast. The Lotus is what is doing the job there, but there are five Bandits. That'll get rid of a Lotus without any issue. I think maybe one will die, but I think... No, I don't even think that. I'm pretty sure five Bandits against one Lotus. One Bandit will be damaged at best. Kane, however, a little bit of disadvantage. That Roach... Is it going to move in? I don't know. But Hokomoko, they basically have taken that northeast and are not letting it go. While at the same time, they are very well securing their own base. This entire area above the ridge on their side, they pretty much have it. Kane has not been harassing. Hokomoko, I mean, that early, that early offense, that early bandit build, that has been paying off pretty well. They've been able to convert that now into territory, which they'll very quickly convert into economy. And then from there, they'll have a much better advantage. Like, Kane has not done anything to stop Hokomoko from expanding. They have a few bandits set up, but they are setting up for defense. They might push forward, they might use it to attack, but I'm fairly certain they're afraid that if they go to attack, that Hokomoko is going to come in like, from some weak angle and try to kill them. The Northeast is considerably stronger now. There's an outlaw along with the Lotus and Defenders. But it's still something that could be overwhelmed. Well, on the other hand, Hokomoko is just getting those defenders up. Like I said, the defenders on the ridge, this is exactly what I was talking about. This is exactly why the games tend to grind out a bit. And Kane with, with yet another roach. Interesting. I'm curious if they're going to send that on defense. Honestly, the way it's set up so far, I would I would think Kane would be wanting to go for an eraser roach setup. And the outlaw is, in fact, getting overwhelmed. It's doing a decent job slowing everything down, but it's not enough. And these bandits... 10 bandits reduced to 7. Not that big of a drop. Like, Eraser plus Roach. An underused combination. I have casted in, like, one game. It is highly underused, but extremely powerful. Because you're basically throwing a Roach in there, and your opponent cannot see it until it explodes. At which point they die. It's really useful for smashing through base defenses. I mean, the only downside is that, of course, the Roach can still be revealed by being adjacent to units as opposed to artillery, for example, which just have no counter. I mean, their counter is being attacked directly by bandits and other light units. But from the defense's perspective, the defenses aren't going to be... It's not going to stop them. So yeah, Kane getting enough roaches, I'm pretty sure that they could set up the eraser and then try to go for it. I don't know if they're going to do that. It looks like they are... No, they're entirely focused on defense. They are taking that northeast corridor. They're making sure that does not get hit. That is their main priority. But Hokomoko, they are expanding over to the southwest. Kane knows it. And Kane can see what's going on here. They do see all these bandits. They do see all of the defenses set up. They see that stuff's being built up over to the southwest. Now the question is whether Hokomoko is going to go to defend or going to partially defend and counterattack at the same time. Because Hokomoko has these bandits set up. They could counterattack right now. But Kane moving in and Kane able to get rid of the southwest decently well. Or at least stop it from being constructed. Slow it down a bit. Not get rid of it entirely. Not get rid of the convicts. So the convicts can still build up. That southwest has not been completely secured. But Hokomoko has taken the northeast pretty well. They haven't built much yet, but they, they will likely build stuff. Well, they've built... Yeah, they have the support infrastructure. They are now building up this northeast section. But Kane not stopping, getting rid of the convicts. One convict down, the other convict also down, and that is the Southwest taken care of. So at least Kane has some chance of conquering the Southwest. If they take that, at least they'll be still even for economy. At this point, Hokomoko is not too far ahead, but I think it's really going to come down to territory control. On this map, as you can see, there isn't a whole lot of metal available, so Reclaim is your friend. Very much so. Well, Reclaim and Overdrive, which admittedly, Hokomoko has been focusing a little bit more on than Kane has. Though neither one's really been focusing on it too much. Kane's main problem actually right now is they don't have enough energy. They've been accessing metal for quite some time. They need more energy. I'm not sure if they're focusing on building power plants or what. Getting a few solar collectors here and there. Though in enemy territory, I mean, really. Solar collectors in the main base would probably be a better idea just because it would be harder to attack. And I can see why they're building them here. They work well as walls. It's just, that's something that I would think would be more useful if you have surplus energy. You know, if you're not worried about losing half a dozen metal, or half a dozen solar collectors, which at this point, Kane doesn't even have enough energy to lose one. And Hokomoko switching to Felon Convict Ball to support the bandits. Kane, on the other hand, going for a Thug. Thug Outlaw. Well, Thug Outlaw Rogue, actually. Not a bad combination to deal with the Felon Ball. 
But given that the Fell Ball's coming in here, these bandits are all dead. And Kane knows it. Kane paying attention. Realizes that there are shields coming in, realizes what's going on. Sees the felon and moves out of the way. Very smart retreat there. At the same time, the felon thug outlaw ball coming in here. This this should be okay. I mean, the felons found it the most useful. The thug providing some useful, actually, thug and convict providing useful shields for the felon. The convict is not repairing the felon though. I'm a little bit surprised at that. It probably will right now, just because now there's some time for it to do so. Where is it? Well, it's, there it is. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I expected. So there is that northeast that has been taken away from Hokomoko. Kane is starting to inch back in. Oh, yeah, that's not law. Anarchy pointing out that I must must have said felons instead of outlaw over here. Yeah, that's that's an outlaw. These are felons. A little redundant, mind you, but yes, that's what they're called. Granted, the entire the entire Shieldbot factory is essentially criminal. Every single name is basically criminal. Except Roach. Odd one out. But yeah, a convict, a felon. Actually, well, I guess a convict and a felon is not the same thing. But an outlaw and the felon would be. Unless a felon's supposed to be the smaller category of outlaw. Oh yeah, Aspis isn't criminal either. Fair enough. And this looks like Kane has managed to turn this around. There is... An emergency stinger being built up, but Kane going for the Thug Outlaw setup much faster. The Felons, however, coming in, losing a lot of their shield power. I mean, the, there are Convicts there, that is going to help, but they're losing a lot of shield power, even with the Convicts. Felon Convict Vault is a powerful thing, and... Oh, how about that? Sneaky Pete! Doesn't look like it's meant to be used for Roaches, though. It is actually just being used... Well, there is a Roach being manipulated with it. So it is going to help out a Roach. But it looks like it's primarily being used for other stuff. However, the Roach is able to come in, it gets rid of the Felons. Well, it gets rid of the Convict support. The Felons fall soon after without any additional support. Cannot recharge the shields in time. Two Felons dead for basically free. Hokomoko has had that turned very much around. I mean, they had a solid lock on the northeast side of the map. They were taking the southwest. Very smart use of the Roach there, and that just worked out nicely. And that Sneaky Pete. So Kane did go for the Eraser Roach setup eventually. At this point though, Hokomoko is not dead. Far from it. Hokomoko still has an economic advantage. Very slight, but they still have one. And it looks like they are switching over to... No, once again, no. Just Convict Felon. They're continuing what they had before. However, setting some dirtbags up to screen out the Roaches, and they were successful in that particular endeavor. There is one more Roach thing... No, there isn't. Never mind. No, there are no additional Roaches. Those are the two. The one roach that was there came from the northeast side of the map. That attacked the felons, destroyed them. However, Kane now is able to pretty easily secure the southwest side of the map. It's going to take a little while for Hokomoko to rebuild that felon convict ball. I mean, they have the convicts. The felon is still coming up, but they have the convicts at least. Hokomoko, however, nicely harassing out these particular defenses. I think it's actually... this is, Yeah, this entire southwest area is dead. If they can find the sneaky P, that's going to do it, but it looks like they are... They're not even going to focus on that. Going to the main base, making a beeline for that, and this is... I totally agree with this. This is a really good idea. Normally I'd say this is a bad idea, but the thing is, that's because the main base is usually the heaviest defended. But Kane basically ran away from the main base and went for this forward fire base as quickly as they could, leaving their main base pretty much undefended and allowing these bandits to wreak havoc. Eliminating the entire thing. All the character will go down, the engines will go down. I don't think the factory will go down before the bandit... No, the bandit support is going to come in here. But still, a lot of damage being dealt here. And if Pokemon goes careful, they might be able to take out the factory, actually. No, they're not. They're not. They're, those bandits are way too much in the way. Take out what bandits they can, but still, that was a that was a pretty powerful raid. Kane can reclaim their way back into this, but Hokomoko just pushing that economic advantage, continuing to getting back to the northeast. They have it once again. They have not lost it. And Kane didn't like, Kane really didn't secure it when they had the chance. They did have the units, they had the bandits over in the southwest. A little surprised they didn't push forward when they had destroyed that felon. I guess they didn't expect the felon convict ball to be the only thing that Hokomoko had. But it was. Like, apart from that, Hokomoko had nothing. So at that point, all they really had to do was just rush in there with the bandits, and there probably would have been game. At this point, though, Kane is still in a solid position. If they get rid of the second felon convict ball, they will be okay. And they have the tools to do it. They have the rogues, they have a bunch of shields. Setting in the outlaws, too, for whatever reason. I mean, hey, why not? Get rid of the convicts quickly. That 
Is that gonna be death? Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be death. I mean, the convict's getting heavily damaged by the outlaws. And now, without any convict support, the felon once again goes down. The thing with the convict felon ball is that you really have to be careful if you don't have enough support, because you have no fire support other than the felon. The thing with thug law felon is that it's much more expensive, but you have fire support. If the felon goes down, you still have a thug outlaw ball. But with felon convict, you do have the ability to repair the felon, assuming the convicts don't die. But if the convicts get destroyed, then there is not much chance at all. And it looks like Kane realizing that Hokomoko did in fact only have the felon convict ball as their military. They are going to be pushing in pretty strong. They are still being careful. They don't want to lose anything. They don't want to lose anything. They are playing shields after all. You want to build up. You don't want to lose stuff. It's not an easy factor to rebuild with. But Kane should be able to tear this apart. One more felon is about it. Yeah, the, the rate at which things are coming in. There are going to be rogues coming in from Hokomoko, but at this point, it almost is irrelevant. I mean, bandits would be nice. There are a few over here, over in the center west side of the map. But frankly, if the felon goes down, that's basically game. And the felon goes down, so that's basically game. The rogues are in. They should be able to deal a bit of damage, but... Yeah, the thug's gonna take out the felons. Sorry, the thug's gonna take out the convicts. The felons will have nowhere to really run, so the range advantage will not apply too much. And there's not enough firepower to deal with the shield ball quickly enough. It's building fairly quickly, though. The, okay, the rack is here. That is a good idea. That will likely change things around a bit. But even then, I don't know if it's gonna be built up in time. I mean, with the outlaws coming in here, destroying the caretakers, if the caretakers go down, that's one racketeer, and that's it. Yeah, the caretakers have gone down. Rogue's gonna go down pretty soon, and these... The existing rogues are dead. They're stuck in a corner, they have no way out. The outlaw can destroy them, and that's... I mentioned before how the type counters are based on physical properties, and part of that has to do with the fact that... Well, one of the consequences, rather, is that you can completely nullify the type counter system in the right positions. If skirmishers are backed up against a wall, riots destroy them. Actually, riots and assaults destroy them. And that's exactly what happened there. But honestly, it doesn't matter. The firepower is the important thing, and the shieldbot factory for Hokomoko has no chance. Hokomoko going for a counterattack, though, seeing if they can come in with the shield bots. Sorry, with the felons and convicts. And unfortunately, they can't, because there's not that much shield energy. Or, well, actually, maybe they can. That thug was not supported. They might have had a chance. They lost their main base, though. Their entire main base is destroyed. They do have a defender nest being built forward, and I think Hokomoko is trying to just attack directly with that, but another roach comes in, smashes this up, and I think... I think that's going to be game. I don't see any easy way to get out of this. Hokomoko, they are trying to rebuild though. Getting a cloaky bot factory, a proxy cloaky factory. Kane is well aware of this, or at least well aware that stuff exists over here somewhere. They aren't entirely aware of what, but they know that there is stuff. They'll soon find out. It's hard to tell if that's actually going to make a difference though. I mean, Kane at this point, they're going for an air switch. They can easily take over most of the map. I mean, Hokomoko does have this area over here. Over in the northeast. But yeah, Kane can take most of the map at this point. If not all of it. Hokomoko has this medley tractor. These ones over to the northeast. They're not that far behind, all things considered, actually. And the Clickabot factory is just about done. It should be about five seconds, then it's done. And after that, we will have a few more units coming in from Kane. Probably a bunch of glaives. Sorry, not clean. Hokomoko. Hokomoko building the glaze. Kane building the ravens, most likely. Those racketeers are actually doing a pretty decent job forcing Kane out. Well, I think Kane is just retreating and regrouping. I mean, they figure they've destroyed most of Hokomoko's base. They need to figure out where Hokomoko has rebuilt, because that's not where they want to focus. Over here is, over in the northeast. Kane, not quite aware of that, though, but they probably soon will be. However, Hokomoko is coming in pretty strong. Oh, nice, using the form. Yeah, that's... I think Alt-Click? You hold Alt and right-click, you actually get that formation move set up. I've never seen anyone actually use that before. That's neat. It's good to see people using that. But anyway, Hokomoko trying to get back here. Locked down the factory nicely, stopping any new units from being built, and that factory's gonna go down. There's no support units coming in. All the support units are way out of position. And at this point, Hokomoko has... Taken out Kane's production, well, Kane's ground production, not Kane's production in general. Something to point out there. Kane still has quite a bit of production. They still have a slight economic advantage. They still have the air factory. They aren't dead yet. 
Okamoko, on the other hand, what do they have for... What's their commander like? Their commander has no upgrades. Just a standard stock support com. Kane losing more and more power, but they have built up... Actually, they built a lot more here where I said before they probably shouldn't bother. Partly that was because of the reason, the same reason why they just lost their main base. They didn't defend it very well, but at the same time they do have... I mean, both players basically have gone for these fire bases over in the corners, which... That's essentially what they've had to build up with. However, I think Kane... I think Kane is going to find out very quickly. They are going to find out very quickly where Hokomoko is hidden. And that is going to be game. Hokomoko cannot get out of this at this point. They're going to lose their commander. Kane's going to be able to get rid of the factory. And then after that... Ooh, nice tick. But nice dodge by Kane too. Pulled back right as that was coming in. Although a second tick. Able to catch the outliers. Still a couple thugs left. That was not bad micro there from Kane. So able to avoid the ticks for the most part, but there are still support units. There's still enough that Hokomoko can deal a bit of damage, get rid of a few extra units before they have to start dealing with this once again directly. And Hokomoko, they're still out though. This factory is gone. I mean, Bomber's just finished. Well, she's not quite finishing off. Bomber's starting to take it out. The defenders, however, doing a very good job getting rid of most of the bombers. Sorry, damaging most of the bombers. Not quite getting rid of them. They missed most of them, surprisingly enough. Actually, that was exactly the opposite of what I expected. What the heck? Still, without extra ticks coming in here, Hokomoko has really no way of stopping this force. Once again, we have another Skirmishers set backed up against the wall. The Clickabot Factory is damaged, but the Caretaker is keeping it alive. And if the Caretaker goes down, that will probably stop Hokomoko. And what? Wow, Hokomoko actually won that! I'm kind of surprised. I mean, I guess that tick really worked out pretty well, but yeah, Kane, Kane figured they lost it. I'm surprised. They actually... They were basically just marching towards victory right there. I guess they just figured that Hokomoko either had enough behind it that they could keep going, or that they had no easy way of getting through these defenders, which neither of which were really true, actually. If those bombers had come back and hit the caretaker instead, that would have slowed down the factory enough, and then the rest of the units could have just gone in and smashed everything up. Though those ticks, though, that, that was a big difference maker. Still, that was a bit of a surprise. Congratulations, Hokomoko, for persistence. The award for persistence. And also taking the most damage, because my goodness, 60,000, yeah. That was all the damage Hokomoko took. So I hope you enjoyed that. I will have one last game for you guys in just a moment. It will be Icons against Kane, and this time it's going to be on a hide-and-seek. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.